In this video, we're going to mix a track from start to finish, even get a rough master ready, using tools found in Music Production Suite 2.1, like the brand new Neutron 3, which you can download a free trial of in the video link and in the description below. Nectar, Ozone, Tonal Balance Control, and more. I'm going to walk you through every step of the way, vocal processing, drum bus processing, everything, so that we can start here. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. What? Get it right back. And end up here together. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. What? Did it right back, worked till it's in, I'm committed like that But I might celebrate cause we win it like that We've been working the streets for a minute like that What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know got it like that? Spin with I make, but I get it right back The first thing I'm gonna do is import my session files into this blank digital audio workstation I'm using Logic, but you can follow along with whatever host that you prefer Check the link in the video or in the description to download free DAW-specific session templates that will jumpstart the Mix Assistant setup process. So I'm going to go over to the folder where the tracks are and just drag them all in. These are the unmixed uh, tracks, so no processing on any tracks in this session. I'll delete Audio 1 and make sure that everything's imported properly. I see data and information here in the waveforms. We're good to go. Now we've all been here before, right? Staring at a session full of unmixed tracks, wondering what do we do first? Do we EQ? Do we compress? Do we start putting things into groups? Adding time-based effects like reverb and delay? Do we start uh, tuning? What do we do? Well, the place where many people start, many mix engineers start, is with an overall level balance, a blend gain-wise of all the instruments in the session to get a kind of sonic hierarchy organized. So What's going to be loudest? Is it going to be a vocal? Is it going to be a guitar, a synth, depending on the genre? Luckily, in Neutron 3, we have a tool called Balance in Mix Assistant that will get this process started really quickly and easily for you. The first step, though, is to place an instance of Relay or Neutron across all of the tracks. So I'll call them up here in Logic by pressing X. And now I see all the tracks from left to right. And I'll hit Command A to select all of them at the same time. We need to make sure that everything is selected before we put a relay or a neutron on the tracks. And I'm going to choose relay. So I'll go to my audio effects. And I have relay loaded up here because I used it recently. But if you haven't used it recently, you can go to your plugin folder, find isotope, relay, and just add them across all the tracks. So it loaded up pretty quickly. And that's because relay is a channel operations plugin. It's meant to allow you to control gain, panning, uh, width, there's some additional features down here like mono, channel swap, etc. But its real function is going to be to send instrument and gain information into this balance feature that I'll show you in a moment here. So I'm going to close this and head over to the master track where I will swap out a relay for a visual mixer, which is right here. So the visual mixer is like a sound stage for your audio. Because of inter-plugin communication, this protocol that allows our plugins to talk to each other, I can see all of my relays over here on the right. So all the track information has been shared into these relays here. And from here, I can kind of visually move around from left to right, panning, or up and down, gain, any track that I want. So I can make a simultaneous pan and gain move at the same time, as opposed to going over here to the faders, turning something down or up, and moving the pan potentiometer to the left or the right. So it's a whole new way to think about and visualize mixing your audio. But for now, I'll just leave everything here at the default, and the real action is in the Mix Assistant tab. So this is where we get our balance started. So I'll press this, and we'll see this Welcome to Mix Assistant page. This is just walking you through everything that I did and showed you how to set up, but it lays out the two steps here, which is to insert you know, a relay or a neutron on all the tracks, and to make sure that your volume and pan uh, potentiometers and parameters are all set to zero, their default state. Ours are, so I'm going to press begin. And from here, we have to choose a focus. This is like, what's the priority? What do you want to be maybe the loudest or the most intelligible in your mix for this initial gain balance? I know the session pretty well, so I'm going to choose the tracks that I know I really want to highlight. The first here is 22, this lead vocal. Now the next is this vocal bridge here. So you can choose as many focuses as you want, uh, but you have to choose at least one to get the process of balance started. So I'll press begin listening. 
and it's telling me to play the song from the very beginning. And right now my little scrubber here is at bar 89, so I'll return it to the very beginning of the session. And now I'll press the space bar to start audio. Now you won't hear things changing right away like you do when you press track enhance or vocal assistant in Nectar. What's gonna happen is all the relays are gonna send information again about the instrument and gain into balance. And it's also going to take into account that information in the context of the focus that you've chosen or the focuses that you've chosen. So don't expect to hear anything right away. We need to play the song from the very beginning all the way to the very end to get the best possible balance for all of our tracks. But while you wait, you can press this button here to be taken to our website to learn more about mixing and mastering. You can make a coffee or just listen to the track. Take notes if you want. This might spark ideas for other mixing activities that you want to pursue later on when you're in the thick of it with EQ and compression. Now that we've reached the end of the session, I'm going to press go to results. And from here we see these five sliders, musical, percussion, bass, voice, and focus. Using advanced machine learning, Mix Assistant was able to determine what instrument type was on these 36 tracks that I imported, and then it slots them into these various buckets, these group sliders, musical, percussion, so anything musical, like keys or guitars, gets input into the musical category, and we can control all of the relays, uh, their loudness, right here from the slider. Anything percussive went into the percussion uh, group slider, and so on and so forth. We can check on the success of this classification by going into Edit Classification here. So when I press this, we see the track name, the plugin that's on it, in this case it's a relay, and where it was slotted. So in this case, the kick was slotted incorrectly into the musical track type. We can change that uh, by clicking on it, going to the drop-down menu, and I'm just going to choose Percussion here. And we can continue down the list. The bass was correctly categorized as bass. The guitar is musical. This next one's musical. So we can just go through and make sure that things are where they need to be before we start tweaking the group sliders over here. So I'm going to do that now. I'm really happy with the success of the classification system. I made a couple of tweaks, but overall, everything is where it needs to be, so I'll close this window. And now I'll listen to the default blend before and after I use Mix Assistant. And I can do this with the Bypass Assistant button. So let's do some before and afters using this button on the fly in the track. We'll start before, and then after, and then back and forth. What? So it sounds to me like before the synths were kind of swampy and drowning out the percussion. After just a default uh, blend using the Mix Assistant, the percussion is much more present. Our focus, so our vocals are much more kind of up against the glass and in your face and loud, which is great. But I do want to make a couple of changes, and I can do that using these sliders here. So I can bring whole groups of musical instruments up and down, basically controlling the relays all from this window here. So I'll have a listen and make some tweaks and changes um, in the context of the song on the fly using these sliders. Cause we winning like that We've been working the streets for a minute like that What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run it, make matters get loud What? Who you know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back What? Give it right back Work till it's in, I'm committed like that But the might celebrate cause we winning like that We've been working the streets for a minute like that So I made a couple of changes to the sliders. Let's do one more before and after before committing these changes and then moving on to other mixing tasks like EQing, compressing, reverb. Here's before. So 
So we haven't made any changes again to the timbre, you know, there's no reverb or anything like that. This just speaks to the power of a great overall fader balance, a great level balance and blend of all the instruments together, which really sets up, I think, the foundation for a great mix. If you get this level balance right, you're going to be moving much faster, much further with other processing like EQ and compression down the road, but it kind of starts with the foundation of this great blend and balance of tracks. So I'll press accept. And now we're taken to the visual mixer again, which is fully resizable in Neutron 3. And from here we can make changes to panning, additional changes to gain, but for now I'm going to move on to individual track processing and group track processing using tools in Music Production Suite 2.1 like Nectar and Neutron. Now that my overall balance is set, I'm going to start grouping things together in this session to make my life a little bit easier. For example, I might bring the kick, punch, snare, and rim uh, tracks into their own group like this, just by highlighting them and then going over here to create track stack and we'll make a summing stack like that. And from here I can write uh, drums or something like that. And from here I can put a instance of Neutron 3 on that whole bus in addition to putting neutrons and whatever else I like on these individual tracks and collapse them down here just so it's a little bit easier to work with and a bit easier for the eye as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the tracks in this session too from the uh, drums all the way down here to the vocals and effects. So now that everything is categorized and grouped and color coded it's really easy for me to navigate this session. All the vocals are in red for example in their own vocal stack and just take a peek and see what's happening in these stacks and uh, work on the things that I want to work on here. Um, I want to start with drums though, which is really important in a hip hop rap track. Well, any genre really drums are very important. So let's start working on those. And in the stack that I've created, we have a kick, we have our punch, which is like a support element for the kick. We have snare and rim. I'm going to bring them all in one by one so you can hear them. What I want to do now is work on the punch and kick tracks here because they're kind of performing the same function, which is to propel the track forward and add the kind of beat and power to this track. Have a listen to just the kick. And here's just the punch. So they're kind of performing the same function, but I want to make sure that they sound the best that they can. But I also want to make sure that there's no masking happening between the two of them since they are so similar sonically. So. I'm going to go to the punch track here and after relay, remember we want to maintain the gain structure that we introduced from our uh, balance um, pass with mix assistant where we started this video. So I'm going to play something downstream from relay. In this case, it's going to be Neutron 3. So this is Neutron 3. It's our 21st century channel strip. And with the mothership, which is what you're seeing here, we call it a mothership because you can add all these plugins in compressor. Um, two compressors, an exciter, sculptor, which we'll talk more about, transient shaper. You can add them all in and move them around to taste and build your own custom signal chain. Or you can just use the component versions if you have Neutron Advanced, and this means you can just use the EQ, just use the compressor, but I kind of want to harness the power of all these modules together, which is why I brought on the mothership. The next thing I want to do is go to Mix Assistant, and we did balance before, and that's when we, just like it says here, listen to the balance of the song and set levels around the focus, I want to go uh, in, instead use Track Enhance, which, like it says here, listens to the audio and then creates a custom preset to fit the track. So we're going to harness the power of all those modules, machine learning, and really smart DSP to come up with a custom preset for this punch track. So I'll press Next, and from here we're asked a couple of questions. First, what kind of style do we want? Do we want something warm or something balanced, so maybe something equally bright and low-endy? if that's a word, <laughs> and something up front, which is maybe putting a bit more emphasis on the treble. And we have these intensities here, low, medium, and high. And this basically just dictates how hard we want to push the processing of Neutron 3 to conform to one of these styles here. And we also have this instrument section. We have auto detect as default, and that's because Neutron's very smart and can tell right away what instrument is on the track. But you can also kind of tell it right here that, hey, it's a guitar, it's, uh, you know, brass, it's high strings. Um, in this case, I'm going to tell it that we have a kick. So I'll press kick. 
and I want a style of, I want to say warm and an intensity of medium. And let's do that. So I'll press next. And just like we did with mix assistance balance at the beginning of this video, we have to train uh, the processing over some audio. So I'll play some audio and get the process started. So I'll press accept and let's hear how far we've come by using this little bypass feature. I haven't really gone through the changes or anything. We can see that a sculptor was added, EQ, exciter, two compressors, and let's just hear it on the default state here, how far we've come. Here's before. It's definitely a lot warmer. It's less plucky and attack heavy on the top end, which is what I wanted. I wanted something a little bit warmer. And I think the sculptor is contributing to that chiefly. We see here we have kick and the sculptor is kind of like a spectral shaper for your audio. So what it's going to do is move and mold and shape your track toward an idealized version of itself using spectral shaping technology. Very simple parameters. This one controls the amount of spectral shaping. This one controls the tone if you want to go toward a darker or brighter kind of profile. And then we have speed, which just controls the ballistics of the attack and release uh, components of this module. And because it acts like a bit of a compressor, we have attack and release controls, which we can control here in the speed. So let me bring these parameters up and down just so you can hear what they sound like in Sculptor. We can make it uh, darker sounding, so to speak, by bringing this tone down. Or a little bit brighter sounding, maybe a little bit more plucky. So we'll bring it down. I like it around there. And the EQ is doing a little bit of work here. We have a dynamic node that was introduced uh, with Track Enhance that's just pulling down energy here at around 150 hertz. We have an exciter that is adding a little bit of saturation um, in the uh, top band here from around 5K and above, and we have two compressors that are just gently framing um, this punch track. But what I'm really interested in is to see if there's any masking happening between the punch track and this electronic kick track, again, because they share so much of the same kind of characteristics, and their sounds are probably interfering with one another tonally. By this, I mean they're probably both sharing space in the frequency spectrum. So to do that, all I have to do is introduce a neutron over here. I'll go to neutron three. I'll close that out and I can go back to my punch track into neutron three. And then you'll see in the equalizer we have masking. So this is our masking meter. So I can go down and find my kick track. There it is right there. And now I can tab over and see what's happening on both EQs and make changes to see if there is any masking occurring. And masking is basically uh, when two things are getting in the way of each other and the perceptual loudness is affected and maybe one is a little bit quieter than it would be and if you have a lot of masking happening across your entire track this could contribute to a lot of muddiness or kind of cloudiness or a lack of clarity overall in your whole mix so let's see if there's any masking happening between these two tracks now that we've um, put a neutron on the kick track we've enabled the masking meter and we can kind of go back and forth and using visual feedback see if masking is occurring So you see these orange flashes that appear every now and then? That's one way um, that we can see any kind of feedback of masking happening in, uh, in the two tracks. In this case, we have something happening at around 60 hertz to 100 hertz. We have the sensitivity meter here too, which we can bring up to add an additional layer of visual feedback to see where masking could be happening. So 
So it looks like there's definitely masking happening between these two tracks, especially in the low end, um, as indicated by the visual feedback. The nice thing about Neutron is that because I have a Neutron on this kick over here, I don't have to go over to it, open up the Neutron, and notch things out and switch back and forth between EQs. I can do everything from the punch track because I can tab right over here to the electronic kick track and remote control the electronic kicks EQ without leaving the punch track. So I'll do that now listening and looking at um, my masking meter and also the frequencies and make some decisions about what I want to cut from the kick track to give that energy to the punch track. I can also bypass the EQs, so both of the EQs, to see if my work is actually resulting in any noticeable differences to the energy levels of both of these tracks. So I'll just click that and have a listen again. So what I hear is that the kick track is adding a little bit more top end and pluckiness, but it's not interfering on the low end with my punch track. I can even enhance the clickiness and uh, treble aspects of the kick track, if you will, by going over here and just adding a bit of a shelf to bring all that stuff up even more. Now that I don't want my punch dealing with treble, I just want it dealing with bass. In fact, I can notch these guys out and bring them down to give the high end energy to the kick track so that the punch is doing all the low work and the kick is doing a little bit of low work, but mostly high work. Let's have a listen to that before and after. So overall, my punch is a lot more round and kind of thick and the kick is doing a little bit more treble work and I'm happy with how things sound. Maybe the last thing I wanna do is just bring out the sustain a little bit more in this punch track, and I can do that by adding a transient shaper after my compressors, there it is right there, and just bringing out the sustain a little bit more so we get an even rounder sound from this punch. Have a listen. And one of the great things is I can AB just the effects of the transient shaper by clicking on these little power buttons here, which turn off the modules. So this means that I can keep all the good stuff that I did over here, but just see what the transient shaper is bringing to this punch track. So here's before. Now that I've worked on the relationship between the punch, the kick, I want to move over to this rim track, which sounds a little kind of boring and dry. Have a listen. And what I'm going to do is go to Ascend here and create a bus, which will send to a reverb plugin that we actually have now called R4. And you'll want to check out our videos that we've done. I'll leave a link in the video and in the description to the Exponential Audio plugins. This one's R4. It's a character reverb. And one of my favorite presets for this kind of rim shot is found in the Percussion folder. And it's this one right here, this large drum plate. So have a listen to this as I bring in signal from uh, the dry track over into R4 and then have it sent back in the track. So it's a small difference, but have a listen to it when I before and after in the context of this whole drum stack. It just adds a little bit of life and movement to the rim shot. It makes it a bit more dramatic as well.
the last thing I'll do to this drum stack is add something on the snare just to spice it up a little bit. The snare is pretty important, and to that end, I'm going to use a bit of Track Enhance in Neutron 3 to make sure that it stands out. So we'll go back to Mix Assistant, Track Enhance, I'll press Next, and I can go right to the Percussion folder, choose Snare, and I want a style of Up Front and Medium, and I'll hit the space bar to get some audio through. Great, let's hear a little before and after. Here's before. Now I'm noticing that the sculptor is bringing up some high frequencies here, which I don't think I want highlighted. So I'll bring in these bands just to target the spectral shaping of sculptor on everything from, let's say, around 300 to 3,000 hertz. In addition to Sculptor, we also have an EQ, adding some brightness here, an exciter, and a compressor as well, just to shape things. Let's do before and after. Here's before. Here's after. And let's do a before and after of all the processing on these drums before we added any neutrons or reverb or anything, and then we'll do an after. Have a listen. Let's move on to Hats and Bells, which is right under the drums track. And we've sorted the drums out, so let's move on to the next thing. So here's what things sound like in this stack, where we have a bell, hi-hat, and a crash. So what I'd like to do right now is add a bit more kind of feel into the bell, which on its own sounds like this. And I think I'll add that feel by going to my reverb, send, and adding a little bit of that reverb on the bell. So we'll go back to bus 8, where we bust our rim track initially, and let's add a little bit of reverb there. Pretty simple. The next thing I want to do for these hi-hats is de-sharpen them a little bit. They're sounding a little bit harsh. Have a listen. I think the best tool for the job of de-harshening these uh, hi-hats is to use Sculptor. So I'm going to call it up here on the hi-hat track. And remember, if you have the advanced version of Neutron 3, you can just introduce whatever individual module you want as a component plugin. So in this case, We'll go to Sculptor, call it up, and you'll notice that we have these Sculptor presets that show up when you bring in the plugin. Let's go for the one that supports the activity that we want to pursue, in this case, Taming Harshness. And hey, we have one called Taming Harshness right there. So I'll click that, press Close, and let's have a listen to the kind of default setting here. So I'm noticing that it's taming things, but maybe in the area of the spectra where I don't want it to tame stuff. So I'm going to open up these bands and just spread it out so that we're getting a reduction in harshness over here instead. Let's do a little before and after with this mix slider. So here's before. And there's uh, after, but after a very specific reduction or attenuation of energy, just in this range from 2.9K to 20K. 
let's do another before and after, before we added any reverb to the bell and before we attenuated the harshness in the hi-hats. Here's before. Now, before we keep moving through this mix, I think it's important to always take a step back and see how the processing is affecting the direction of the mix. I'll do this by soloing the drums and the hats and bells and bypassing Neutron and R4 and then unbypassing them to see if we're going in the right direction. So here's before. So in the percussion group here, we have a couple of chimes. And to be honest, they're not doing too much. So I'll collapse them for now and maybe return if I feel I need to kind of work on them. But what I really want to do is tackle this bass track, which is a bit of a bass synth and unaffected, no processing, sounds like this. The thing I'm really interested in though is how this bass is interacting with the punch on my drum stack. So I'll solo the punch and just take a listen to see if I'm perceiving any masking happening between those two tracks. So it's still not totally clear to me if there's any masking happening between them, but I have a hunch that there could be. So on my bass track, I'm going to call up Neutron 3. And I'm going to open up the masking meter here and navigate to the punch track. It's 2 punch. There it is with the Neutron on it. And let's see, after bringing up the sensitivity, if there's any masking happening between these two tracks. And again, my bass is here. We're hanging out on the bass track on the Neutron bass. My punches EQ is right here. Let's have a listen and a look. So we definitely have some potential masking right here. And there's a couple ways that we can deal with that. Um, I think the first thing I want to do, though, is work on getting a good sound for this bass track before tackling masking issues. And like before, I'm going to go to Mix Assistant. I'll choose Track Enhance. I'll press Next. And from here, I'm going to choose from the instrument type here a bass. And I want Upfront as my style. I choose Upfront because I think the punch is going to be my kind of ambassador for the low end of this mix. And the bass, I want it to kind of hang out in the treble area. And choosing these styles here will change how the processing treats the signal and which area of the spectrum it's going to push the energy of uh, the track. If we choose warm, it might favor the low end elements a little bit more and push the processing of the compressor and the EQ to get a warmer, more, more low end sound. If we go for up front though, we're going to push things to get a brighter kind of trebly sound. And that's what I think I'm happy with for this bass. So I'll choose up front and an intensity of medium, press next, and as always, play some audio to get the process started. Let's do a little before and after. So here's before, just default settings of track enhance. And after. So right away, this bass has <laughs> some teeth on it. It's a bit uh, sharp sounding, which I like. Definitely more up front, and I think it's being aided a lot by this uh, this boost here with the EQ. I think I might bring this down just a little bit. And the exciter, we also have some action on the top end, 
and the compressor again it's just framing everything really nicely let's go to sculptor here and see if i can't make this sound a little bit more up front Let's do a little before and after just using Sculptor. We have these mix parameters here, and what these allow you to do is blend in the signal almost in a parallel way to introduce just a little bit or a whole lot of it. It's up to you. But this is how I'm going to do my little before and after, by slowly bringing in the affected Sculptor signal against the dry signal. So it sounds like the sculptor is doing a little bit of work, but a lot of the work is happening on the EQ and the exciter as well. So I'm happy with the sound that I'm getting from sculptor, but what I'd like to do is go over here and make sure that it's staying out of the way of the low end of my punch track, which is over here, which I'll solo one more time. Because we opened the masking meter, by the way, um, we have the masking over here, and we can toggle between the two tracks like before. I think the way I'll deal with this is to make this node here a dynamic node. So what this means is I'm going to bring the shelf over here. I'll switch it from a Baxendahl shelf to something a little bit more simple, like an analog shelf. There we go. And what I'm going to have it do is duck every time the punch uh, punches through. So I'll set my sidechain input over here in Logic to the punch track. I'll go and open up this little partition, choose dynamic, choose sidechain, and then I'll go to full signal and external. And now every time that punch hits, the bass is going to duck a little bit just to make room for the kick. So the kick doesn't kind of lose the low end power that we've given it by um, some of the processing that we've done on the drum stack. So have a listen now. So we almost get that pumping effect, and if I want, I can control the amount that this uh, band travels by moving the threshold up and down, so we can have it travel a little, like this. Or a lot, like this. So you'll see that I kind of moved this a little bit over here so that we're not affecting too much of the mid-range of the bass, which is pretty important. Let's do a bypass EQs to go before and after our moves. So here's before. And here's after. So now we've affected the bass, but the punch is coming through nicely and not competing for space with our bass. Let's unsolo these and just hear everything in context. I'll solo just the drums, the hats and bells, the percussion, and the bass. before in context, before any um, 
dynamic EQ work was done with our masking meter. Let's keep moving to the guitars, synths, and then we'll end with the vocals. Now the next portion of this track is the guitars. Let's have a listen to the first guitar, which is on this guitar stack. It sounds like this. And the next one over here sounds like this. So as you can hear, these guitars are already affected with a lot of processing. There's um, probably some pedals they went through. There's definitely some delay, some reverb, saturation. So there isn't that much for us to do except make sure that these guitars fit within the context of the mix. And for me, there's no better tool to do this than using Sculptor. So I'll bring Sculptor onto the guitars um, stack so I can affect both guitars at the same time. And I'm not going to use the Sculptor Presets menu. Instead, I'll go for the Target menu here. We develop these targets by analyzing hundreds and hundreds of acoustic and electric guitars, keys, synths, pianos, orchestral instruments, etc., and listening to what those elements sound like, not on their own, but once they're embedded within the context of a very busy mix. You see, often you might track an electric guitar and it sounds great on its own, but once you try to add it within the context of a larger arrangement with other instruments, it has to take on a different tonal quality to sit well with everything else and contribute to a really healthy tonal balance. So that's what these targets are designed to do. They're designed to help you situate your instruments within the context of a very busy mix. And when you add Sculptor to more and more tracks, you'll notice an overall clarity and an overall separation of instruments that you just didn't have if you weren't using it. So we're gonna go for guitar and distorted electric because that's the kind of guitar that we have here. I'll hit solo and bring up the spectral shaping a little bit. So right away we have these peaks over here from 300 hertz and up that are a little bit spiky and poking up and maybe adding some resonance. And just after introducing the distorted electric guitar preset in Sculptor, we've managed to tamp down on them a little bit, which should help the overall tonal balance of this mix. So let's do some before and afters using this mix slider here. Here's before. And here's after. So in real time, it's analyzing the incoming signal and just pushing things down gently to make sure that this guitar stays a guitar, but fits within the context of this mix. Let's unsolo this and hear it within the context of the entire arrangement. We'll do some before and afters here. I came to say what's on my mind. No game. And after. Listen to how that resonance is pushed down. Let's move on to the synth tracks. And whenever I'm mixing synths, I'm always keeping two things in mind. The first is that synths are often very full frequency. So there's notes, you know, a little bit like a piano is also full frequency that encompass, you know, all the way from 20 to 20,000 hertz. So they're kind of spread out across the spectrum, and that can be problematic if you have elements of your mix that are, let's say, the champions of the low end. So your bass and your kick, those things are the things that you want to occupy that space. A synth, especially something lower in the low mids, might get in the way of the intelligibility of the kick and the bass if that's how you want to divide things. 
So if, for example, you want the synth to be the low end star, that can be okay. But for this mix, I'm noticing a little bit of interference, which is very common with synths as they are full frequency. The other thing that I'm noticing and that I look for with uh, synths is resonance. So a lot of old analog synths, they sound amazing, but once you kind of embed them in the context of a larger mix, um, certain notes or sounds, especially in the mid-range, can sound a little bit too loud, too harsh, and they need to be dealt with in order to ensure a good overall tonal balance. So the first thing I'm noticing here is that full frequency factor and also a little bit of resonance in this synth number 15. Let's see if you can hear it. We also have a synth pad here, which is also pretty full frequency and maybe competing a bit with our bass track. Have a listen. So I'm going to deal with the synth track here, number 15, with a sculptor right there, call it up. And right in the preset menu, we see tame resonances. And that's exactly what I want to do for this guy. So I'll click that, press close. And let's have a look and a listen to where sculptor settles its energy around this track. So without me having to do anything, Sculptor has identified these two areas here as being a little bit peaky, let's say, and has used its spectral shaping energy to very gently suppress that area. And let's do some before and afters here with the mix parameter. Here's before. That is far less resonant and sounding much better. Let's move on to the synth pad and we'll tackle the other problem that I mentioned I normally associate with uh, synths and that's that they're very full frequency. So I wanna make sure that I shave off a little bit of low end energy from this synth. And it's really easy to do with the EQ in Neutron because it's context specific, this EQ. So if I hit node number one here and just start moving, it's automatically a shelf. It knows that I probably wanna do some high passing work. Same thing, a lot of people like to add a little bit of brightness and sparkle. Node number four is just automatically a high shelf. So it just helps to support the activities that people normally do when they reach for those nodes and they're already kind of pre-baked. But of course, you can always just, you know, click to add a node anywhere and start EQing from there that way. So I will start doing a little bit of high passing work here to make sure that the information on the synth isn't interfering with my bass or my punch tracks. So I'll continue identifying and suppressing areas where I think some harshness is occurring, and I'll also start high-passing other synths to make sure that they don't interfere with the low-end energy of the bass and the punch tracks. And then we'll do a before and after of all the tracks that we've been processing so far. it's time to tackle the all important vocals. Let's first hear what they sound like with no processing, just an overall level balance that we achieved from using balance in Mix Assistant at the beginning of the video. We'll jump around a little bit. Here's the very top of the song. And here is the chorus, so to speak. Wish I could go back, but the future look perfect. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back. What? 
Give it right back, work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who you so let's tackle this vocal group by dealing with the most important vocal, 22 lead vox. And this is also one of the vocals that we made um, our focus in the mix assistant portion of the video when we did our initial balance. So I'm going to use a tool called Nectar 3, which is included in Music Production Suite 2.1. Nectar 3 is like a Swiss Army knife for vocal production. It has everything that you need to bring a vocal from rough to radio ready, including EQ, compression. We also have a de delay, dimension. You get some effects in there. We have a harmony, which adds artificial harmonies to your vocal to give it a kind of choral effect, a reverb, saturation, and more. And just like uh, Neutron 3, we have a form of track enhance in the vocal assistant tab here that's called assist. So It'll listen to your audio, just like it says, and create a custom preset to fit the vocal in the mix. It'll also automatically take care of de add a bit of reverb, and just get you started really quickly mixing your lead vocal. So I'll press next, and from here we have some questions. Do we want to go for a vintage vibe? This might be good for jazz or soul, modern, pop music, rap music, dialogue. This is great for if we're working on a podcast or a YouTube video, and of course our intensity is light, moderate, and aggressive. I'm going to choose modern and moderate, and I will solo my track. And just like all the other assistants that we have in our plugins, press next and play some audio to get the process started. I'm grinding, I'm grinding, that currency coming, I'm sexing the money. I'm shining, I'm shining, I'm certainly stunning, the bras call me cunning. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get lapped? Who you know got it like that? And so once we get to the other side and accept the processing, we can see that a number of modules have been placed here, just like they are in Neutron 3. So we have an EQ with some subtractive nodes here, a de which automatically attenuates any sibilance, another EQ to brighten things up, a compressor, and also a little bit of reverb just to kind of polish things and make this vocal sound professional. And of course, we can always tweak these modules or add new ones over here to complement the ones that we already have in our signal chain. Let's do a quick before and after to see the results of this processing using the bypass button. So here's before. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get lapped? Who you know got it like that? Spin with that make, but that get it right back. Get it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. Uh, who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get lapped? Who you know got it like that? Spin with that make, but that get it right back. Now you might have noticed that the gain went up a little bit after using Vocal Assistant. This is in part because we introduced this auto level mode here, which automatically rides the gain for you so that your target gain is always at around minus 8 dB or so. And this is so that if your performer is a little quiet or a little loud, they're always hitting a consistent level and your compressor doesn't have to work as hard. But this also means that after you do vocal assistant, you might want to compensate on the output level to make sure that the overall loudness after processing fits with the overall level of the rest of the track. So to that end, I'm going to unsolo the vocal and hear how it sounds in the context of the rest of the mix and maybe take things down a notch on the output slider in Nectar. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. What? Get it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know? That's definitely fitting in a little bit better with the rest of my tracks. I'll mute all the other guys here just so I can hear how the lead vocal sounds with just other instruments. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get lapped? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. Get it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. The level's much better. It's still a little bit bright for my taste, so I'm going to drag this out and maybe bring all these notes down a little bit so it's not too bright. Who you know got it like that? Run and make rappers get laughed. Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. Get it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. Uh, who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. Get it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. 
So I made a few tweaks here. You can see that I, I increased the suppression of energy with these nodes that were placed as a result of vocal assistance work. And I also um, turned these guys down a little bit, uh, these three nodes at the same time in the tonal EQ. And I went over to the reverb and just increased it a little bit to give um, Pell a little bit kind of more polish and space in this lead vocal. The next track I want to tackle is this ad lib right over here. And here we have Pell just saying the word what. Check it out. What? What? I think we can definitely make this track more interesting by adding some time based effects and also maybe doing some high passing work. So I'll bring on Nectar 3, and I'm going to go to one of my favorite presets. It's over here. And it's actually part of the legacy presets for Nectar 2 hip hop and rap and just go down until you see extreme grime. Close that. And now let's have a listen. What? What? So we're doing some band passing here. We're adding some saturation, which I think I might want to turn down a little bit. And we're also adding some delay, some quarter note delay, which just kind of ping pongs the signal back and forth and just gives some movement to this uh, track. I'll make a few more tweaks and then I'll show you the, the uh, before and after. So I've made a few tweaks, but before we do a big before and after, I wanna show how the gate is helping to reject some of the bleed that we hear um, as part of Pell's uh, headphones. We hear the bleed coming from the track that he's listening to as he delivers his performance. We hear that bleeding into his vocal mic and without the gate, we hear that every now and then, but with it, um, it totally rejects it, which is really handy. So I'll turn off the gate so we hear, you know, uh, lapped and all the other stuff that's in the verse. Let me turn the gate on and it just cleans it up really nicely. So let's do another before and after here. I added a gate. I was a little bit more liberal with my high passing on the EQ. I've turned the saturation down here with this mix parameter. Uh, the compressor is still the same from the preset. We have a little bit more reverb going in, some delay, and also a dimension module with a phaser effect, which sounds really cool. Blended in just a little bit at 21 there. So let's do before and after on that. Here's before. What? 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 And here's after. What? 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 And now let's bring it in with the lead vox, so we can see how far we've come here. Street for a minute like that. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin with that, make but I get it right back. Get it right back, worked in the tin, I'm committed like that, but I might sell So here's before we did anything to the lead vox and the uh, vocal ad libs. Before? Street for a minute like that. What? Mm. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know got it like that? And after. Let's bring these both in. Street for a minute like that. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin with that, make but I get it right back. What? Okay, let's keep moving and deal with some of the other vocals that we have in this group. Let's keep moving to the vocal chorus doubles here, number 27 and 28, which joined Pell during the chorus. And what I did was I instantiated Nectar 3 after relay on number 27. I ran vocal assistant just as I did on the lead vocal assist, and then I chose a modern and moderate intensity and vibe. And I ended up with this, which I tweaked. I made some cuts here and high passed a bit further. And then we have our de -esser. and I really brighten things up between 600 and 6,000. We have a compressor, a reverb, didn't touch that too much. I added a little bit of delay. And then what I did was I went to my track and I just option dragged the settings from Nectar 3, well, the whole Nectar 3 plugin onto number 28 as well. So they're sharing the exact same settings. So let's do a little before and after. Here's before we came up with those settings. Street for a minute like that. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? 
Who you know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back. And here's after. Street for a minute like that. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back. But I want to take things even further with panning. And the easiest way to do this is actually to go to the visual mixer, which we parked on the master stereo out at the beginning of this tutorial. So when I click on it, it opens up in its full glory and of course, resizable too. The other kind of customizable feature in addition to resizing is that I can mute visually some of the tracks that I don't want to see in Visual Mixer. So anything with a relay, nectar, neutron on it in your session will show up in Visual Mixer. And if there's too many things kind of clouding the screen, you can just kind of mute them, which is really helpful. So I've muted anything that I don't want to see for the moment. What I do want to see, however, is nectar. There's number 27, nectar 3, and there's number 28, nectar 3. So from here, I can pan these vocals out to support the lead vocal, which I'll unmute. Number 22 is our lead. And now when I press play, we can see things lighting up and different colors associated with the different nodes of the different products. So nectar is going to be in yellow, as you'll see. Take a look. Street for a minute like that. Uh, who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin so I'm gonna pan number 28 to the left here. Street for a minute like that. Uh, who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. Give it right back. Worked in the ten. I'm and I think I'll take them down and gain just a little bit too. Street for a minute like that. Uh, who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back. Give it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate cause we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. So we've come a long way with just a few moves. We've only really changed the lead vocal, the vocal uh, doubles here, and this ad lib. Street for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. What? What? Give it right back. Let's bypass the vocals that we've worked on so far again, just to get a bit of a gut check and a context check to see how far we've come. So here it is with no nectars. Three, four, a minute like that. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. What? Three, four, a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who what? you know got it like that? Spin what I make, but I get it right back. What? What? Give it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate cause we winning like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. Let's take a look and see how these vocals are doing within the context of the overall mix. I'm going to unsolo these guys and keep all the other vocals that we have not processed uh, muted. Let's take a listen. Three, four, a minute like that. Uh, who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back. Give it right back. Worked in the ten, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. You can see here that I was struggling to get the sound of the ad lib up in volume simply from the output slider, but by introducing the auto level mode, it makes sure that it rides the gain and keeps it at that minus 8 dB, which means that I don't have to work so hard with my output to make sure that it kind of hits that level. And now it sounds uh, much more flush loudness wise with the rest of the vocal tracks in this mix. I'm going to go ahead and start working on the other doubles and then I'll walk you through how I came up with the settings for them. And then we'll do a little bit of a pre-master using Ozone 8. Let's continue with vocal mixing here on the doubles in the verse section. So we have 23, 24, and 25 doubles and backing vocals to support Pell during the opening verse and his verse here on number 22, that lead vocal that we mixed earlier. So I'm going to turn the nectars off, one, two, three, and here it is before um, we added any processing. Sex and the money. And I'm sex and the money. Bros call me cunning. And the bros call me cunning. Tell me it's nothing. They tell me it's nothing. And now let's turn them on. 
Sex and the money. And I'm sex and the money. Bros got me gunning. And them bros got me gunning. They tell me it's nothing. And they tell me it's nothing. Let's do one more before and after before going into the settings, and let's turn on the lead vocal that they're supporting, and let's turn the nectars off. So they're supporting Vox number 22. Here they were before with no nectar. I'm grinding, I'm grinding, that currency coming, I'm sexing the money. I'm sexing the money. I'm shining, I'm shining, I'm certainly stunning. The bros call me gunning, the bros call me gunning. I know they don't know me, but after my show, and they tell me it's nothing, they tell me it's nothing. Tomorrow ain't promised, I live my life finest with. And now let's turn them on. I'm grinding, I'm grinding, that currency coming, I'm sexing the money. I'm sexing the money. I'm shining, I'm shining, I'm certainly stunning. The bros call me gunning. The bros call me gunning. I know they don't know me, but after my show, and they tell me it's nothing. They tell me it's nothing. Tomorrow. So let's go track by track here and investigate what settings we have. So for this Vox backing number 25 here, I decided to high pass things a little bit and brighten them up. And we have a little bit of reverb here too. And this uh, was derived from a preset in the Nectar 3 preset bank um, we have over here called Music. And if you go all the way down, you'll find Pop Background. So that's how we came up with that one. And for the other two above, we started with uh, another preset from the Music Bank called Breathy. And I copied and pasted these settings for 24 and 23 vocals. So they're exactly the same. Uh, an EQ that again is high passed here, bit of action taken out at around 4K or so, compression, de some saturation as well, and some reverb. And the last thing I did was I went over to my visual mixer here, and so take a look at 23 and 24. So there's 23, and there's 24, and they're sitting left and right of the lead vocal, and we can kind of affect their gain and panning even further, but we have uh, a nice panning structure here. Of course, we pan 27 and 28 for the chorus, a little bit wider, but uh, for the verse, things are a little bit more narrow. And this is also an arrangement effect that we use in pop a lot where we brighten things up, stretch things out, make things really panned uh, left and right for a chorus, but maybe we're a little bit more narrow and conservative with our panning in a verse to make sure that when the chorus hits, it's a little bit more impactful and kind of panoramic than the verse. So that's how I came up with that structure and a uh, set of settings for the vocals in the verse. We are almost at the finish line, but before we add Ozone 8 to work on a pre-master for this track, what I'd like to do is some bus processing. Bus processing is when you apply some processing to the kind of piping that everything is running through. All your drums, all your percussion, all your bass stuff, all your vocals. And this just helps to frame and shape things before you work on your master. And in this case, we have stacks that we built right at the beginning of the session, drums, vocals, etc. So I'm going to place an instance of Neutron 3 on the drum group or the drum stack in Logic here and see if I can't add a little bit more processing before we start mastering. So I'm going to go to my Neutron 3 mothership and I'll open the sculptor, which has some targets that are built for bus processing. So all purpose. And you see we have fullness, polish, we even have instrument bus. I really like the polish uh, target, so I'll click that. And I'm going to close out the equalizer and just start playing with this with the drum stack soloed and see if I can get a sound that I like. Let's do a little before and after. I only made a few moves on the intensity and tone sliders, but already I can hear that the top end is much more crisp and the low end is even more 808-like and thick. So here's before. After. If we notice that there's any, you know, distortion or clipping here, we can always introduce a limiter. Just click on it, and then you can bring the ceiling here just to protect against any overages. Click away so that we don't have those red marks anymore. Let's do another little before and after.
Let's hear it in the context of the mix. And it's tasty, but don't abuse it. You heard me? Wish I could go back, but the future look perfect. What? Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you what? know got it like that? Spend what I make, but I get it right back. What? What? Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who what? you know got it like that? Things now sound so much more pressed up against the glass and real and kind of present than they did before. And I'm going to add Sculptor to a couple more stacks and then we'll move over to Ozone 8 and finish up this tutorial with a great pre-master. We have come a very, very long way. Remember, we started with a blank logic session. We added our tracks and we got a great balance using Mix Assistant in Neutron 3. Then we added Nectars and Neutrons across the drums all the way to the vocals. We panned with the visual mixer, and now it's time to prepare a rough master. And to do that, I'm going to use another tool found in Music Production Suite 2.1, which is called Ozone 8. And I'll place it on my master uh, stereo out here, right after the visual mixer in Neutron 3. Remember, we use this to pan things. I don't want to mess up the panning structure, so I'll close this out, keep it on the track, but add Ozone after it. And there's Ozone 8 right there. For the uninitiated, ozone is to mastering what neutron is to mixing, or nectar is to vocal mixing, in that it gives you everything you need in one place to polish and prepare your track for the masses. So we have, for example, a maximizer. This is our limiter. Dynamics. This is a multiband compressor. We have this little button here, which allows you to add a whole bunch more modules to really uh, polish your sound and get it ready for the world. But the tool that I want to lean on a little bit for this pre-master is called Master Assistant. And just like Track Enhance in Neutron 3 or Vocal Assistant in Nectar, Master Assistant gives you a starting point for your master by optimizing the modules to suit a destination for your track. So is the destination a streaming service? Well, we're going to use some of the modules and processing to tailor it and make it sound great for a streaming service like Apple Music or Spotify or Pandora. Is it going to go on a CD? Well, we have a number of intensities here if you're going to put it on a compact disc. And also we have reference, and this allows you to load a reference track, and what's going to happen is Ozone 8 will match the loudness and EQ profile of the reference track and impose that profile onto your source track that you're mastering so that your master sounds a little bit more like and is just as loud as the reference track that you're loading in. In this case, I'm going to choose Streaming and press next. And look what it says down here. For the best results, play the loudest part of your track. So I've set a loop here at the chorus, and I'll press next. And again, just like any of our other assistants, we have to train it. So I'll press the space bar and get the process started. Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin with that make, but I get it right back. Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. Who you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Who you know got it like that? Spin with I make, but I get it right back. Give it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. And in about 10, 15 seconds, we're done. Now let's go through and investigate the moves that were made uh, during the pass of Master Assistant, starting with the EQ. So the first thing we see here is that Master Assistant did a, a cut here, a low shelf analog style, down 1.2 dB of gain at around 54 hertz. And you'll notice that it's a very slight cut, 1.2. That's because we're in mastering territory now, where very small moves are made to affect the sum of the audio in a very subtle and transparent way, but always for the better. And we have a couple of boosts here. Node number two, up 0.6 dB of gain at 1.27 kilohertz. And we have another boost here. Maybe it determined that there needed to be a bit more energy in this region. And also what looks like a high shelf analog 0.5 dB up. So that's pretty interesting. The next thing it did was it decided not to engage the dynamics module, that multiband compressor that I mentioned earlier. And sometimes mastering is about not doing something if something doesn't need to be done. So that might be why it's turned off. And now we have a dynamic EQ, and this is because what we want to ensure is that we don't distort level-wise before going up in level in the maximizer, which is our limiter. And we've gone up around 4 dB or so from where we started. So we're looking for clusters of energy or buildups of energy 
that might get accentuated as a result of that level jump, and we take care of them before they get brought up by the maximizer with this dynamic EQ. So take a look as I play the audio at the areas where uh, it's decided to add these nodes and suppress energy in those regions. Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you what? know got it like that? Spin with that make, but I get it right back. What? What? Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? Let's do a before and after using gain match, which will essentially match the gain before and after we bypass so that all we hear is the sound of the processing from the equalizer and the dynamic EQ, and not the sound of the gain jumping up and down, making us think that after sounds better simply because it is louder. So here's the before. Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you what? know got it like that? Spin with that make, but I get it right back. What? What? Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate cause we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who what? you know got it like that? Spin with that make, but I get it right back. What? What? Give it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate cause we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? But of course, if we want to hear the difference with that jump in level, because we did introduce a maximizer and mastering is all about making things a little bit louder, let's do that too. I've turned off gain match and let's do some bypassing there. Before. Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you what? know got it like that? Spin with that make, but I get it right back. What? What? Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who what? you know got it like that? Spin with that make, but I get it right back. What? What? Give it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. The very final thing I'm going to do is bring up Tonal Balance Control, which is also a part of Music Production Suite 2.1. I'll bring it up after the Visual Mixer and then after Ozone 8. So it's the very last thing on my master bus. And what this plugin is going to do is give me a sense of how healthy the distribution of energy all the way from low to high is in this track. And the way that we assess the overall health of the tonal balance of your mix is to measure it against a target. We've developed three at Isotope, bass heavy for EDM and hip hop, modern think for pop music, and orchestral for classical or film music. We develop these targets by analyzing literally thousands and thousands of well-regarded mixes and identifying commonalities that they share, and then coming up with these different quadrants in green here, which represent the healthy areas to be in frequency-wise, energy-wise, for the low, low-mid, high-mid, and high areas of the tonal balance of your track. Of course, you can load in your own targets if you want by clicking here, and you can add a custom target curve from a track that you love, or even a whole folder of songs. So the way it works is like this. We're going to choose bass heavy, and I'll play some audio, and we'll see these white lines dance around these areas in green here, which represent the typical ranges of energy that we want for a well tonally balanced bass heavy song. So I'll press play. Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you what? know got it like that? Spin with that make but I get it right back. What? What? Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed like that. But I might celebrate cause we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? So it looks like we have great tonal balance in our track. And we have two views here. We have broad and fine. And fine just gives you a different way to analyze and interpret the uh, information. Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who you what? know got it like that? Spin with that make, but that get it right back. What? What? Get it right back. Work till it's in, I'm committed. But of course, if we noticed a deficit in energy or an abundance of energy in the high, high mid, low mid, or low quadrants here, we can address it very easily thanks to interplug and communication. By this, I mean if we're noticing that we have a lack of high end energy in the high section. I could make a mastering move by going into my uh, plugins over here and finding my ozone, which is right there. And now we've called up the ozone EQ. I can remote control it from tonal balance control. Just to prove it, I'll open up ozone and we'll bring tonal balance up as well. And now you can see 
that the EQ that I'm remote controlling from Tonal Balance is the same EQ in Ozone. So let's make a little bit of a boost here to bring the line up in the high end uh, for the overall track. Get it right back, work till it's in, I'm committed like that, but I might celebrate because we win it like that. We've been working the streets for a minute like that. What? Who what? you know got it like that? Who you know run and make rappers get laughed? What? Who what? you know got it like that? Spin with I make, but I get it right back. What? What? Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video gives you a sense of the power that Music Production Suite 2.1 can have to transform your next mix. Take care.